Dear Andrea Rosen, I hope this email receives you well. I'm writing to you, hoping that you remember a naive email that I sent you to pass on to Felix Gonzalez Torres in 1999. Back then, I was in fourth year university, coming out in my life and in my work as a gay man. In the 90s, during the culture wars, and still today, Felix's work was and is a huge inspiration for me to pursue an art and academic career. However, as I sent you a letter introducing myself to you and Felix, I didn't read Felix's biography properly. You were very kind and wrote back to me, telling me that I had not read his biography and that he had passed away. However, he would have been very touched by my letter. I was so embarrassed by my bad research that I deleted that email from my account immediately. I have regretted that hasty decision ever since. I often think about that only fan letter I have ever written and of the email response that you sent me. I have gone on and studied my MFA at Goldsmiths and completed my PhD. I am currently represented by Carly Rolf Contemporary Art in Australia, who works with some amazing artists such as Juan de Villa. He is Chilean-born and migrated to Australia in 1974 due to political turmoil. He, like Felix, has made a significant contribution to gay politics of the 90s through an immigrant experience. These artists, by their very nature, interest, interest in histories inform my work. I currently teach at the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology in the School of Art in Photography. Later this month, I'm giving a performative lecture at the Australian Centre of Contemporary Art in a series called Departed Acts, in which artists are invited to reflect on a situation or event that has led them to continue making artwork. That letter, for me, was a significant moment. I am in the process of rewriting that letter, and I was wondering if, by any chance, you have it in your email archive, or if you remembered it at all, by chance. I sent it to you from my first ever email account, nicolaos3000 at hotmail.com. If you do happen to remember or still have this email, I'll be very humbled if you could respond, as I'm gathering my material for this performance lecture later this month. Attached is some published material from the Australian Centre of Contemporary Art on my work for that project. I look forward to hearing from you. Kind regards, Nick Pantazopoulos. Hi Nick, so happy to receive your thoughtful and meaningful note. Your note conjures so many different directions of thought for me. I have to say, I do vaguely remember receiving a letter from someone that I did remember having to respond to let them know that Felix had passed away. While I've done preliminary search from my email, it's too long ago to come up. It is potentially possible that we did print out a copy of this letter, as it's possible that was our practice at that time. This would be either in the archives of the gallery or of the Felix Gonzalez Torres Foundation. I would happily have my archivist try and find it. Of course, I'm now quite invested in finding it, as I'm curious to reread it as well, as to provide it to you. While there are no guarantees, 
we will will certainly do our best to look for it. While I can imagine it's significantly more painful to you that you erased it, I too am pained. I certainly do hope I was kind in my response. The last thing I would ever want to do is to make you make anyone feel embar- embarrassed for their appreciation of Felix. I will get back to you and in the meantime please note my direct email address as we don't look at the info account as frequently. The gallery phone number is plus one two one two six two seven six thousand. I do look forward to receiving more information about your work and your performative lecture. These days I have particularly keen interest in practices that have no object presence. If it's appropriate, I would very much like to read your remake letter. I do appreciate that you feel that the loss of that letter had some positive effect as well. If you are ever in New York, please feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to meet you. All my best, Andrea. Dear Andrea Rosen, I'm studying honours in sculpture at RMIT, and during my studies I've been thinking about Felix Gonzalez Torres and the framing of absence in his work. Felix's experiences and reflections on living as a gay man through his artworks during the culture wars in the 90s in America have been inspiring. Felix is one of many radical gay men living with HIV that have fought a conservative government for support during the AIDS crisis. Instead of raising his angry fist from the outside, Felix was able to manoeuvre and take his conversation inside museums, galleries and public institutions. Felix transformed minimalist histories with his love, his life and his fight with HIV to educate and talk to the public. Felix has provided a community of homosexuals without hope, without a sense of a future, with no role models who are fearful to think through their anger in a different way. I don't have to tell you, I know you support him. However, I often think about him and Ross and how harrowing and poignant his works are. Could you please pass this letter on to him? Dear Felix, I hope this email receives you well. I am a fine arts student in honours in a fine arts degree in Australia. I studied my first three years in photography at the Victorian College of the Arts and transferred into sculpture at Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology because I felt the restrictions of a conversation on an image. I am also interested in the research and outcomes that the art students and staff are doing on this course. I wanted to participate and develop an interdisciplinary practice with an emphasis on material process and critical thinking. I have been making models of architectural spaces. These utopic houses that I was making were a reference to Alex Danko's Superbia series, in which Danko made a grid of small-scale model houses on the floor, all mirroring each other in shape and scale, in grim, cold, grey, concrete-like moulds. I disagreed with his view of suburbia. I found the suburbs that I grew up in to be a colourful place of difference. Cultures such as Turkish, Lebanese, Italians, Greeks, all living side by side, and learning from each other. I designed spaces that mimicked a gay wog. In Australia, wog is a slang for a European immigrant, kitsch, camp, aesthetic, using photographs. I recognise the spirit of materials that Constance Zikos used in his sculptures, those queer assemblages that screamed Greek aspiration. These surfaces that I photographed of interiors 
were fixed onto cardboard and cut out to resemble a futuristic form, that of a Californian bungalow-style weatherboard house, shimmering, shining and hard-edged. Paul Carter's, Paul Carter's essay, Margaret Carnival, influenced the way in which I thought about the suburbs of Melbourne. He wrote about the surfaces of houses, the front doors left open, the perforated fly screens, the smell of foreign cuisines, wafting. One particular event that has influenced me to pursue art was the time I discovered by accident a magazine called Art and Text in the newsagent as I was surreptitiously scanning the aisles for gay pornography. This encounter with an art magazine has had a lasting impact on my decision to turn to art and photography. In this issue, I discovered homosexuality through an alternate lens. I quickly learned that art was a platform to express difference and artworks that were coming out in the 80s advocated through a feminist lens was a place where homosexuality and immigrant practices could flourish. I found that deciding on studying art meant that I could discover other gay lineages in this space. I could assert my own homosexual immigrant experiences into the world. I didn't really know how or what, but I felt a little less isolated. Like you, Felix, I wanted to attain that relationship with my work that crosses boundaries. You say, I don't want to make art just for people who can read Frederick Jamison sitting upright on a Macintosh chair. I want to make art for people who watch the Golden Girls and sit in a big brown lazy boy chair. They're part of my public too. Since affirming my sexuality through art and coming out numerous times, I have attempted to have several long-term relationships, not at once, but as a result of, and have recently become single again. I read your work empathetically and sympathetically, as you consistently deal with pairings, time, endings and loss. I feel like you would relate and understand my sense of grief. The poetics of loss is comparable to your black and white billboard photograph of an empty bed with the indentations of heads resting on a pair of pillows. This absence marked with a trace of bodies I relate to. I can only imagine the grief you would have experienced losing Ross to AIDS. I think about the pairings that you make that stand in as a metaphor for your same-sex relationship. The photographs of the monument to soldiers. The clocks. Don't be afraid of time. You say. The bed. Its absence of bodies. The paper stacks in pastel blue. The light globes strung together. The beaded curtains. The plinth. With the go-go dancing boys. The museum guards explaining your work. Like you, I love minimalism and the way it rearranges space and the encounters that you make with them. I never really understood the power of political art until I saw your work. Up until then, their angry aesthetics distanced me. Your approach to making the personal political makes so much sense. Felix You have transformed minimalism that has been presented through a white heteronormative male lens and instead used an immigrant homosexual narrative to reconfigure iconic works that forefront important issues about the gay male body. The romantic rupture you imply in an abstracted form for a slowly unfolding narrative that you make is exhilarating. You have weaved a practice that today is still groundbreaking. Homophobia is still a thing. Relationships, despite the marriage agenda, are not taken seriously enough. Schools still struggle to have a curriculum that discusses our histories 
and it is still legal to be gay in so many countries. Making the gay agenda mainstream is important so that gay relationships are more visible and tolerable. Felix, you're an important figure to many gay artists within a homophobic culture that operate with a patriarchal domination. You showed love in your work and you describe a HIV body transgressing the culture wars of the 1990s. You reimagined your boyfriend's body using weight, taste and form as a context to rethinking gay desire. You explore personal and cultural tragedy through an art historical lens. Felix, you made it okay for me to think about a more intimate set of bodies that deviate from heteronormativity. And you also allowed me to get involved in cool, edgy forms of modernism without fear of feeling isolated for not being a heterosexual white male. Felix, you reformed a language through your relational projects that were not too opaque to understand. You provided a context. You turned Robert Morris's corner work into a sensual experience. You provided a context to why I'm unwrapping a chocolate that I picked up from a man, mound of 99 kilos of barchies, poured into a corner and instructed me to eat them, swallow and dissolve, let them dissolve in my mouth and enter my body. You enacted that dangerous space of having your lover, a man with HIV, inside me. This feeling of absence that you capture in your works is the foundation of lack and its persistence. You consider a universal condition and you make it accessible through your thrashing observations of life. You touched on a history of the LGBTIQ plus community through your reductive and enriching works. This is so encouraging. This work of yours is so amazing, so awesome, familiar, so distinctly your aesthetic, engaging, playful and rigorously painful. As a young gay man, I came out consecutively in my teenage years and adult life. Still today, in all my new relationships and at work and in my social life, I am continually outing myself. Sometimes I have to think of creative ways to tell or retell someone I am gay because I get so bored and at other times I feel threatened and very nervous. Growing up, I knew I was gay and I was not going to be deterred from the legalities or illegalities of homosexuality. I was going to have my own form of a white picket fence. I always had the fantasy that I would meet someone and use my fierce political passions to assert my relationship in this world. I would have a life partner, someone to ride through life and have experiences with. Since the 9th of December 2017, same-sex marriage has become legal in Australia, which you would hope would make coming out easier. I officially came out as a gay man in my first year of university. I had attempted to much earlier in my teenage years. However, with my first official boyfriend came the pressures and the need to proclaim my love for somebody, to all of my relations, family, friends, colleagues, and to be recognised as a couple in the public space. We were together from my first year of university to the end of third year. He was instrumental in my work. He was a soundboard to my conceptual ideas and he enjoyed offering advice in the making process. We were together for three years and have since broken up. I am heartbroken. I wasn't ready for a long-term relationship. And again, more recently... I broke up from another long-term relationship. I was his first official or public boyfriend. He came out to his heteronormity family and I was his soft landing and a pedagogical admission to his gay life. 
I idealised unions and what the political agenda for same-sex marriage in Australia fought to make possible. So for me, this relationship was an opportunity to appeal to my desire for marriage. I thought I wanted it. But maybe marriage is not for me. Maybe I am better off to be single. Or maybe I am polyamorous. Or better off in a throuple. Maybe if I have the opportunity to have another relationship, it will be consensually open. In the 90s, the media instilled fear through presenting AIDS as a terrifying grim reaper bowling down society. The gay community that I knew supported each other through care, education and safety to reduce anxieties. We now have the option to take PrEP, pre-exposure prophylaxis, one blue pill a day. This is a preventative measure from not contracting HIV the very thing that took the lives of our gay role models and threatened the idea of intimacy and hedonism. Having PrEP means we can have sex with whoever we want as often as we want. There are still risks involved. This is not 100% safe, and condoms are a prerequisite to avoiding other STDs, such as gonorrhea, chlamydia and syphilis. The gay community is having a sexual revolution. As a young man who was also dealing with his own inner homophobia, you made it possible to be a homosexual without having to subscribe to the gay scene's aesthetics and to have to present myself as a label such as fairy, queen, femme, twink, drag, drag queen, Cub, Bear, Muscle Mary. I could be, as you say, work on the homosexual agenda without having to wave a red flag proclaiming my sexuality in a prescribed way. I am finishing honours at the end of 1999 and I'm planning to come to New York. I would very much love to be an intern in your studio and to be your assistant. I read somewhere your studio is in your home and you work in the kitchen. I would of course do this labour in exchange for your valuable knowledge and to spend time with you and hear more about your works and to learn more about the gay agenda from a position of being an artist that is fighting homosexual oppression during the gay culture wars and to spend time with you in the studio, to be comforting to you and to hear stories of your relationship with Ross. I am very interested in working for you as I am wanting to develop the homosexual narrative of my own practice, one that does not frame queer homosexual discourse in the usual usual rhetoric of either complete obfuscation or traditional queer methodologies of dress and theatre. However, like you, one that embraces conceptual ideas, metaphor, materials, photography, the print relational practices and the political system to discuss everyday experiences of living and dying as a gay man traced through a political post-minimalist lens. I know that you came from a photography course before you went to the Whitney Independent Study Program. I am influenced by your trajectory and in the way that you think about objects and photographs and performance and the need to participate with the institution in your works. I have got many skills that I have learnt through my education. I can use all format digital and analogue cameras. I have lighting and flash skills. I am good at digital editing with Photoshop, Final Cut Pro, Premiere, Lightroom, Camera Raw and Capture One. I can print from digital files and analogue negatives. I have learnt good workflow skills and I am adaptable and able to alter these skills if need be to suit your studio. I'm also good with Microsoft Office and I research ferociously. I'm planning to move to New York when I finish my studies, to spend time in the galleries and museums and get consumed 
and the hedonistic gay culture of the city. If you have an opening for an assistant, would you please consider this letter as not only a fan letter, but as my application? If you would like me to follow up with any references or academic transcripts, please let me know. I look forward to hearing from you. Yours sincerely, Nick Pantasopoulos. Dear Nick, Thank you for your letter addressed to Felix. He would have been very touched by your words. You address so many things that he thinks about in his work. Unfortunately, you have not read his biography properly. Felix passed away in 1996. We wish you all the best in your studies and your work. Kind regards, Andrea Rosen. <laughs>